Laudator Jesus Christus, Vatican and World News. In the headlines this Tuesday, the 11th of May, Pope Francis issues a motu proprio establishing a lay ministry of catechists. At least eight people are killed in a shooting at a Russian school. And church leaders appeal for calm as violence continues to escalate around Jerusalem. In the Vatican, I'm Lydia O'Kane. Pope Francis on Tuesday issued a new apostolic letter or motu proprio establishing the lay ministry of catechists intended to respond to an urgent need for the evangelization of the modern world. Christopher Wells tells us more. Fidelity to the past and responsibility for the present are necessary conditions for the Church to carry out her mission in the world, writes Pope Francis in the apostolic letter Antiquum Ministerium, with which the Holy Father institutes the lay ministry of catechist. In the context of evangelization in the contemporary world and in the face of the rise of a globalized culture, he says, it is necessary to recognize those lay men and women who feel called by virtue of their baptism to cooperate in the work of catechesis. The new ministry has origins going back to the New Testament, where it is mentioned in the Gospel of St. Luke and in St. Paul's letters, albeit in seminal form. Since the Second Vatican Council, there's been a growing awareness of the importance of the role of catechists for the development of the Christian community. In our own day, too, writes Pope Francis, many competent and dedicated catechists carry out an invaluable mission for the transmission and growth of the faith. Every catechist, says Pope Francis, must be a witness to the faith, a teacher and mystagogue, a companion and pedagogue, who teaches for the Church. Catechists, he continues, are called first to be expert in the pastoral service of transmitting the faith, from the first proclamation of the kerygma to preparation for the sacraments of Christian initiation and throughout the process of ongoing formation. All this is possible, he says, only through prayer, study, and direct participation in the life of the community, so that catechists can grow in their identity and in the integrity and responsibility that identity entails. Receiving the lay ministry of catechists will emphasize even more the missionary commitment proper to every baptized person, writes Pope Francis, a commitment that must, however, be carried out in a fully secular manner avoiding any form of clericalization. I'm Christopher Wells. Russian authorities say a young gunman has attacked a school in the Russian city of Kazan, killing eight people, including seven eighth-grade students and a teacher. Some 21 others were hospitalized with injuries. As Stefan Boss reports, the Russian president has expressed outrage at the attack and ordered stricter weapons regulations. Ambulances and security forces rushed to the school in Kazan City, 700 kilometers or 430 miles east of Moscow, where a gunman killed students and a teacher. Some people tried to comfort each other as the news sank in. Rustam Manikanov, governor of the Tatarstan Republic, where Kazan is the capital, said four boys and three girls, all eighth grade students, died in the shooting. Manikanov's press service later added that a teacher was also killed. The governor also stressed that the 19-year-old gunman, who he called the terrorist, has been detained. However, his motives were not immediately clear. The governor confirmed that a firearm was registered in the name of the young man. He said that other accomplices haven't been established, but that an investigation is underway. During the shootings, some students reportedly escaped, but many were trapped inside here before Russian security forces could move in. As the death toll rose, Russian President Vladimir Putin expressed his condolences to families of the victims in the latest school shooting shocking his nation. He ordered the government to assist the loved ones of the victims and the many injured who he wished a speedy recovery. And President Putin demanded that Viktor Solotov, head of Russia's National Guard, revise the regulations on types of weapons allowed for civilian use in light of the attack. Authorities said additional security measures were immediately put into place in all schools in Kazan. Russia's emergency ministry sent a plane with doctors and medical equipment to Kazan, 
two leading officials, Health Minister Mikhail Marashko and Education Minister Sergei Kravtsov, also headed to the region. While school shootings are relatively rare in Russia, there have been several violent attacks on schools in recent years. Some involved militants, but shootings were mostly carried out by students themselves. For Vatican Radio, I am Stefan Bos, reporting. As violence continues to escalate in and around Jerusalem, the patriarchs and heads of churches of the Holy City are appealing for an intervention on the part of the international community. Meanwhile, militants in Gaza launched rocket barrages into Israel for a second day today, and Israeli planes fired missiles into the Palestinian territory, where the health ministry said the death toll rose to at least 26, including nine children. Linda Bordoni has more. Violence escalated on Monday night after Palestinian militants fired rockets towards Jerusalem. In response, the Israeli military launched airstrikes against militant targets in the Gaza Strip. The escalation of clashes came amid mounting Palestinian anger over the threatened eviction of families from their homes in East Jerusalem by Jewish settlers, fueled by a month of altercations between protesters and police in the predominantly Arab part of the city. In a joint statement, the patriarchs and heads of churches in Jerusalem have expressed their profound concern and appealed for international intervention. These concerning developments, whether at the Al-Aqsa Mosque or in Sheikh Jarrah, they said, violate the sanctity of the people of Jerusalem and of Jerusalem as the city of peace. The actions undermining the safety of worshippers and the dignity of the Palestinians who are subject to eviction, they continued, are unacceptable. The Jerusalem church leader's statement also noted that the special character of Jerusalem with the existing status quo compels all parties to preserve the already sensitive situation, adding that the growing tension backed mainly by right-wing radical groups endangers the fragile reality in and around Jerusalem. We call upon the international community and all people of goodwill, the patriarchs and heads of churches of Jerusalem concluded, to intervene in order to put an end to these provocative actions, as well as to continue to pray for the peace of Jerusalem. I'm Linda Bordoni. Afghanistan's Taliban have announced a three-day truce that coincides with the Eid al-Fitr, the Muslim holiday, marking the end of the month of Ramadan. Father Benedict Mayaki reports. Taliban insurgents announced on Monday that they would observe a three-day ceasefire in Afghanistan for the Muslim holiday of Eid al-Fitr, which marks the end of the month of Ramadan. This move has reportedly been welcomed by the Afghan government. The ceasefire is scheduled to start on Wednesday or Thursday this week, depending on the sighting of the moon, which determines the start of the holiday. Observant Muslims fast throughout the month of Ramadan, which this year began on the 12th of April. The latest announcement comes amid heightened violence in the country and follows bombings outside a school in Kabul on Saturday that killed at least 60 people, most of them female students, and injured more than 165 others. Moreover, after the ceasefire announcement, a roadside bombing in the southern province of Zabul on Monday killed 11 people and wounded dozens, including women and children, in another instance of the increasing violence in the country. So far, it is still unclear who was responsible for the attack, as no group has claimed immediate responsibility. Meanwhile, Kabul, the Afghani capital, has been on high alert since the U.S. announced plans last month to pull out its remaining troops from the country. The final 2,500 to 3,500 U.S. soldiers and roughly 7,000 allied NATO forces are scheduled to leave by the 11th of September. The Taliban and the U.S. in February last year signed an agreement to end the 20-year war, which started with U.S. and allied forces invading Afghanistan following the September 11, 2001 attacks in the United States. Under the agreement, Washington was to pull out troops in exchange for Taliban security guarantees and for the group to start peace talks with the Afghan government. Talks began last year but have since stalled. Last month, Washington said that it was pushing back the troop withdrawal deadline from the 1st of May to the 11th of September. I'm Father Benedict Mayaki. Bulgaria's President Ruman Radev called a snap parliamentary election on Tuesday for the July 11th and appointed Stefan Yanev, his close security and defence adviser, as caretaker prime minister until a new government is formed. The country is heading to the polls again three months after an inconclusive election in April resulted in a fragmented parliament that failed to produce a government. 
India's coronavirus crisis showed little signs of easing on Tuesday with a seven-day average of new cases at a record high. The World Health Organization said the coronavirus variant first identified in the country last year was being classified as a variant of global concern. India's daily coronavirus cases rose by 329,942, while deaths from the disease rose by 3,876, according to the health ministry. India leads the world in the daily average number of new deaths reported, accounting for one in every three deaths reported worldwide each day. Meanwhile, the church in India is finding innovative ways to help ease the devastating effects of the second wave of COVID-19 in the country by opening up its facilities and resources to the affected people. Cardinal Oswald Gracious, the president of India's Catholic bishops, explained how the church's charity and healthcare sectors are responding to the crisis. Robin Gomes has more. The Catholic Church of India has made some 60,000 beds of its healthcare facilities available in the country's battle against the devastating second wave of the COVID-19 pandemic. More than 50,000 nuns normally work at these facilities, a thousand of whom are qualified doctors, said Cardinal Oswald Gracious of Bombay, the president of the Catholic Bishops' Conference of India, CBCI. Faced with the catastrophe, India's Catholic Church is doing its utmost to help all those suffering, irrespective of caste or creed, he told Asia News. The Church's extensive works of mercy are carried out largely through Caritas India, its social and development arm, and the Catholic Health Association of India, CHAI, a network of over 3,500 healthcare and social service centres across the nation. On Tuesday, the Health Ministry reported 329,942 new infections with 3,876 deaths, taking the total fatalities to 249,992. Experts say government figures are greatly undercounted. Cardinal Gracious, who had a meeting with Caritas India last week, said they are finding innovative ways to bring relief to those affected. The CBCI president has also been holding meetings with Catholic hospitals to step up assistance to the people. We are also coordinating financial aid to buy more ventilators and increase our medical equipment to save the lives of our people, which will be available for people of all faiths and creeds, the cardinal said. Our schools will operate as isolation and quarantine centers, our institutions as vaccination centers, and our religious personnel all over the country will begin our campaign to encourage people to get vaccinated. He said church authorities will continue coordinating with the government in educating people to strictly adhere to preventive measures against the virus, such as social distancing, washing of hands with soap, and using face masks. In the spirit of Christian hope, he said, we will get out of this. I am Robin Gomes. Well, that brings us to the end of this edition of Vatican and World News. For more on these and other stories, be sure to visit our web portal at www.vaticannews.va. That's www.vaticannews.va. You can also like our Facebook page and follow us on Twitter. Many thanks goes to Vincenzo Proto in the studio in the Vatican. Thank you for joining us.